fitness has changed significantly over the years, and you know what? I thought it would be fun to take a look at what people were doing back in the 1950s. So I thought it would only be suitable for me to have 1950s styled hair, or my attempt at least. I would consider myself to be a physically fit individual in today's standards, but you know what? I think the standards were a little bit different back then. One of the biggest health and fitness trends in the 1950s was Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne was pretty much the fitness guru of the 1950s. Fun fact, he was only five foot six, but man, he had an incredible amount of confidence and charisma. The Jack LaLanne show aired originally in the early 50s in San Francisco and eventually found a national audience. Jack LaLanne would teach exercises that looked similar to modern Pilates, and he would even incorporate common household items. But while the exercises themselves were pretty simple, he made fitness approachable for women, and I suspect he helped women begin to feel more in control of their health as well as their family's health. So we obviously have to try it out. See that? Now we got going here. One, two, three, four. Put your hands right out here like this. On the side. Then lift your foot up. That's it. Bring it right up to your hand. One. Great for the waistline. Great two, for the waistline. Three. One, two. Bend your knee. Not too much. Now walk towards it. Come on. One. Two. Are these Groucho walks? Backwards, two, and three, and four. Okay. What can you do to firm up the back of your leg? One, two, three, four. Get the thigh up higher. Higher the thigh, the better. And pump, and pump, and pump, and pump. All right, now we've graduated. Boy, we're in a big fight. Back, big Think right in here. Come on now. Hold it. Tight, tight. Think. Feel in here. Head forward. Head forward. Hold it. Tight, tight, tight. Hold it. Hold it. Don't you stop. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Put your head up. Feet up at the same time. And remember, think in here. Let's go now. Up and hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Tight, 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 tight. Head up. To retrain those lazy, hot condition stomach. Abs. And free. Hip flexors, man. And I have to say, the Jack LaLanne stuff really impressed me. It was, well, not what I do today, which is a little more intense, but honestly, the, the moves weren't terrible, and I thought they might be. The next fitness trend that we need to try is hula hooping. Now, this may not have technically been a traditional fitness trend, but we have to include it. Hula hoops were huge. The fad first started in Australia and it made its way over to the US through a toy company called Whammo. I've seen different numbers, but within the first six months of hitting the market in 1958, millions and millions of hula hoops were sold. While I think they were primarily targeted at kids, you can find pictures of people of all ages hula hooping. And if you've hula hooped for any significant amount of time, you'll know that it is definitely a workout. <laughs> I only did that for about a minute and a half. Okay, that was a, a good amount of core stabilization and uh, yeah, I'm like a little bit out of breath. <laughs> I call that a win. I think ultimately I'm really glad that I don't live in the 1950s. One, doing my hair like this every day, I, no, no thank you. <laughs> I also just really enjoy feeling strong and I don't know, I'm kind of getting a vibe that strong women weren't necessarily valued and that wasn't seen as a feminine quality. I'm getting the sense that in the 1950s, this is kind of when fitness culture was starting to form or really just take any sort of shape. I mean, I know technically fitness has been around forever, but I feel like this might be around when it became a little more mainstream, especially television making that widely available for anybody. Well, anybody who had a TV. But it's also right around when things are starting to become a little more sedentary. I mean, people are still moving around the house and cleaning and doing all of that and like the whole housewife thing. But if you think about how much more technology we have since the 1950s and how much more sedentary we've become as a society, it paints a picture, doesn't it? 
So I think it makes sense that nowadays there's more emphasis on building muscle, especially since having a faster metabolism in today's world where, I mean, we could get anything we want anytime. We just have to go to the store or even order it online. Like we don't even have to leave our house. So I am a nutrition coach and a certified personal trainer. And would I say that these fitness trends are fantastic? No. They're not that great, but there is movement, there is activity, and that is super, super important. For my clients, I always try to encourage movement. So that could look like walking, going on a bike ride, doing a workout, like you name it, like whatever you want it to be. I mean, ideally there is some sort of muscle building and resistance training type activity going on, but at the end of the day, because we live such sedentary lifestyles, it is important to move around. So from that perspective, I do enjoy these like 1950s style workouts or exercises. I think out of everything that I tried today, the Jack LaLanne exercises, that was probably my favorite. And it encouraged women like, hey, you can move and be active. Were the exercises the best thing ever? No. But I think it did show you things like, here's how to work your core or how to engage your hamstrings and your quads and things like that in a fun, encouraging way to kind of ease you into connecting with your body. Am I gonna incorporate any of these exercises or modalities into my regular routine? Probably not, but you know what? I think that's okay. I think having exposure to this is just half the fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.